was going to surprise me the way that he did. So I hope that you have your notebooks, your pencil, uh, and, and get ready to, uh, jot some things down. If you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> um, last night I had a vision right before I went to bed. And I believe that that vision was definitely for me and all of you as well. That is tuning in or whoever will see the replay or however this is. But I believe that this is a rhema word from the Lord. Amen. So before I even open up my mouth, I just want to go before God in prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you for an opportunity to serve. I thank you for your people. I thank you, Lord God, that we are here to listen to what you have to say. Lord God, I decrease that you will increase. Have your way in this place, in this time, in this moment, in the name of Jesus. Let your word go forth, Father God, like a fire in Jesus' name, burning up everything that's not like you. Lord God, plant water and give the increase to us, your people. We love you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I love y'all. You are the part of the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ wherever it's at, all around the world, internationally. So I'm so happy to be here. The title of my message is called The Mark is in the Bark. I know it's different, right? The Mark is in the Bark the bark. This is exactly what I heard in the vision last night, right before I went to sleep. And I'm going to tell you about it. So if God give you a revelation, please share with me. Amen. (laughs) So I lay down and as I close my eyes, I I begin to see dancers. Um, I'm also a praise dancer. I, I got the attire. I go to churches sometimes and, you know, praise prophetically with my flags and things like that. So I'm seeing dancers as a team. It's about six or seven of us. We're all um, African Americans or Africans. We all black. <laughs> and we all had on black clothes and we were dancing and there was a momentum in the dance that it began to speed up and you can hear, um, instructions. You can hear the instructor saying, okay, y'all speed it up so we can get this part right. There's certain parts in the dance where if you miss it, you mess up the whole formation of the dance. So in that moment, we were working very hard to make sure that um, all the work that we pra- all the work that we put in in practice that came out good. So it, it was a moment where we all had to lock shoulders and go around in a circle a few or more than a few times. So as we're doing that move, one of the guys on the end of that move, he began to speed up like, and that helped us get the momentum that we need for the circle to go faster. And before you, and I remember me like making my legs go faster too, so we could do this circle move. And before you know it, we took off straight forward and I'm running, like we're running straight, we're running straight. I don't I can't even explain to you what the atmosphere looked like. It was just so supernatural around us. Everything around us was just different to me. It was so supernatural. But as I looked up in the sky, it's like I saw um, an outline of a leopard and it was light lit up. And it was an African American lady or a black lady. She was heavy set and she was behind me. She's running too. And she was like, you out of order. You know, speak what does say the Lord. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Say what God, you have a calling on your life. You have to fulfill the call on your life. You have things that you have to do. She began to speak life. She she rebuked me. She spoke life. And then she was like, the mark is in your bark. Open your mouth and say what the Lord has said. Open, the mark is in your bark. And I'm like, okay. In, In the vision, I'm like, yeah, but then I got out of the vision. Now I'm in my bed at that moment. And I'm like, wow, wow. So I got my phone and I put the mark is in the bark. And I put open your mouth and say what does say the Lord. I'm sorry. How much time do I have so I don't go on a tangent? (laughs) How much time do I have to speak? Dr. Wee? Fourteen minutes? Okay. Okay, good. Fourteen? 
or 40. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I, I got out of the vision and I, I put it in my phone. The mark is in the bark. Open your mouth and say what thus saith the Lord. I woke and then I, I went back to sleep. So that's the vision. So I, when I begin to write it down, that's when all the words begin to form. That's when I start to receive everything uh, from, from the Lord and what he was saying. Now, bark, one of the definitions of bark is utter. A command or question, abruptly or aggressively. You know, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violence take it by force. Flow with me. Um, it's call out in order to sell or advertise something. That's another definition of bark, like barking orders. We're uttering a command or a question abruptly and aggressively. I believe that God wants us to get into our rightful position to get in order and speak what, what God is saying to see the manifestations happen in our life this year. Amen. I know that 2020 was a test like no other, but in this year, God is going to bless and, and put his people in the right place. But we have to do the work because faith without works, it is surely dead. So God wants us to open our mouths and decree a thing and see things happen in our lives, not only in our lives, but in the body of Christ in other people's lives as well. Now, when God wants to mark something, let's just say he wants to mark something in the earth. He gives his command. So when I say bark, I want you to uh, put that with command or order, you know, advertise. I want you to think of that thing. You can even use bark as a call out in order to sell, advertise your business. I think about that as well. It's so prophetic. So when God wants to mark something in the earth, amen, Let's just say um, in Genesis 1 and 14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. Amen. If we go to Genesis 4 and 15, it says, But the Lord said to him, Not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord did what? He put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. It's a mark that God is a mark of the Lord. Okay. He marks out, this is in Job 26 and 10. He marks out the horizon on the face of the waters for a boundary between light and darkness. God has marked something. How did he do that? With his command. He, he put the command out. He put the order out. Amen. If we look at Proverbs 8 and 29, I hope I'm not going too fast. If I'm going too fast and you need to write down these scriptures, give me a sign. Give me a mark. Amen. Proverbs 8 and 29, it says, when he gave the sea its boundary, so the waters would not overstep his command. And when he marked out the foundations of the earth, amen, it's a mark that when God wanted there to be light, what did he say? He said, let there be light. He gave the command. He gave the command. God wants us to give the command in things that manifest in our life. No more keeping your mouth closed. I don't care if you got to be like the blind man who kept calling on Jesus to come and help him to have mercy on him. And people was telling him to be quiet. Nobody believed in what he believed that Jesus can do for him. You need to give your bark to, to establish the mark that is, that belongs to Brittany. That belongs to Ashley. That belongs to Dr. Uy. You need to, to open up your mouth and, and decree a thing and make your mark in, in, the, in the earth in Jesus mighty name. If we look at Isaiah 40 and 12, it says, who has measured the waters in the the hollow of his hand or with the breadth of his hand marked off the heavens who has held the dust of the earth in a basket or weighed the mountains on the scales and the hills in balance. Amen. God has marked that thing from his, from a simple command out of his mouth. Glory to God. I'm trying to get you to understand what I'm, what I'm saying about this word mark and this word bark. Glory to God. I want it to be, um, what is it, imprinted on your soul that you will begin to bark some things and mark your territory in the things that are unseen to see it in the things that are seen. Glory to God. If we look at 1 Kings chapter 20 through 22, 1 through 28, I'm not going to read it. <laughs> um, uh, the, the prophet Micaiah, 
he prophesies against King Ahab. King Ahab didn't like him. <laughs> Jehoshaphat, he wanted King Ahab wanted Jehoshaphat to go fight with him. So he called uh King Ahab called his prophets in. Now the prophets that um King Ahab used was the prophets of the grove and the prophets of Baal. Th- that those are not the prophets of the Lord. So when they prophesied all these soft things, these good things, make them feel good. Yeah, go into war, go fight. Yeah, God is going to give you give you the victory. King Jehoshaphat was like, eh, is there not a prophet of the Lord that will speak concerning this matter? So King Ahab, he didn't like, you know, the prophet <laughs> Micaiah, but he was like, let me just call him in. Micaiah didn't, you know, really want to give him the truth because, you know, he know how the king is with him. So when he was like, yeah, go ahead and fight. The king had to tell him like, bruh, how many times do I have to tell you to just tell me the truth, what the Lord is saying? And so when the prophet gave him the word of the Lord, like, don't, you know, if, as soon as you do it, you know, I'm seeing all your people that dead. Basically, it just looks like a, like a people with no leader. Like it, that's, he just gave him like, you know, it's going to be a disaster. Basically you will lose. So the King looked at Jehoshaphat, like, bruh, you I see, didn't I tell you, he's not going to prophesy to me. Good things. Didn't I tell you? So the um the king he will he came against the prophet basically telling him like take him to this place and lock him up basically but the prophet he stood his ground and he said mark my words all ye people okay i want i want you to get that in your spirit he said mark what my words he said mark my bark basically he said this is i'm putting i'm putting what the word of the lord is i'm saying what god wants me to say mark those words amen whatever promise that god has given you whatever word that god has spoken into your life i want you to Bark that out. Give that command. Give that order. It is so in the name of Jesus. And watch those things happen. Make your mark. Make your territory in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Our words are powerful. Glory to God. If we if we proclaim and decree a thing and it is so. In Mark chapter 11 verse 23 and 24. Those are my favorite two scriptures. <laughs> It says, truly, I tell you, and I'm coming from the NIV. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. He didn't say it may. He didn't say it might. He said that it will be yours. I need somebody to get that in their spirit that their the mark is in the bark. Glory to God. In Ecclesiastics uh, chapter 5, 2 through 4, it says, do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. Okay. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. Think about, think before you speak is, is the reason why I'm reading this. Think before you speak. Glory to God. It also says a dream comes when there are many cares and many words mark the speech of a fool. So just be careful if you're speaking anyhow, any way, you know, just speaking anything on anything. Be mindful of the words that come out of your mouth. Glory to God. Don't just speak anyhow about yourself. You are not broke. You are not stupid. You are not lame. You say, I am, I am the righteousness of Christ. I am his child. Okay. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich and adds no sorrow. I am blessed and highly favored of the Lord. You speak life. You speak life and not death over yourself. Don't, don't, don't speak anyhow. Okay. No, that's talk, talk. You know, now nah, we ain't just want to be talking any old type of way. <laughs> Being all talk. Okay. And no action. Amen. Faith without works is dead. I just want you to realize that too. As we're decreeing, as we're marking some things, we go after those things. Okay. Where others say there's a casting down. We say that there is a lifting up other people. They probably don't have no hope, but we are children of the most high God. Amen. And he would not make us ashamed of our hope according to his word. Now, as I'm talking about action, that brings me into my next point. Okay. That our, that our action marks our ways. Now for me, that is, that is, that is, that is so deep. 
Okay. In, in Isaiah 59, one through four, it says, surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear for your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt, your lips have spoken falsely and your tongue mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice. No one pleads a case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments they utter lies they conceive trouble and give birth to evil amen i believe that is okay they separate from God. okay so basically this is letting us know that our ways if we do these things this is marking this is marking our ways now in verse 7 in the same chapter of 59, it says that their feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. They pursue evil schemes. Acts of violence mark their ways. So our actions mark our ways. So these are people that, you know, if sin is found in our life, if sin reigns in one's life, that separates them from God. Amen. God knows what we do with our hands, our fingers, our lips, our tongue. He knows exactly what it is that we do. Our actions speak louder than our words. Amen. So it's so important that we line up with what we're confessing. As we can keep professing it, we should work towards that thing and then we align up alignment means that things will begin to manifest in our lives amen our actions mark our ways our actions mark our ways you know the tree by the fruit and you know the fruit by the root. I want you to be mindful in this season, who you hang out with, who you have these, uh, whatever, whatever type of conversation, be mindful of the conversations that you have. Be mindful how you speak on others. Be mindful how you speak about your future. Be intentional about how you speak about yourself, speak about others, be intentional about that thing. Amen. So Proverbs, uh, 16, if I can Proverbs 16, six through seven, it says through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for through the fear of the Lord. Evil is avoided when the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way. He causes their enemies to make peace with them. So God looks at our ways and when our ways please pleases him. He makes even our enemies to be at peace with him. Amen. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. His love and his faithfulness. Amen. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. That helps us to, when we have a reverential fear of God, that's, that's when we could depart from evil. Amen. Ezekiel chapter nine, it talks about how like God had mercy on, on certain people. I'm, I'm still talking about the mark the mark that God puts on people. I'm still talking about that. So in Ezekiel chapter nine, he said uh, to, it was a vision that Ezekiel was having. And it was a lot of detestable things that the people were doing in Israel again. <laughs> so God, he gave Ezekiel a vision and it was some men in that vision that were there to destroy. And it was some men in that vision that were there to put a mark on the people who God wanted to have mercy on because those people, they were crying out in disgust and, and they were also detest about the things that they were, that, that they were seeing the children of Israel do. So God told them to put a mark on those people that they will be saved. He said, they will not be, um, they will not be slain. We know as children of God that the wages of sin is death. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Flow with me. So lay aside every sin and weight that so easily besets us. Like we, we all need that word. We all need that word. Amen. So I prophesy in the name of Jesus that we are marked for mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. The mark of Jesus, if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to God. In Galatians 6, 15 through 18, it says, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. This is not by our works that we should boast. It's by Jesus. It's by his sacrifice. Amen. It's by the grace of God. So peace and mercy to all who follow this rule to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble. This is what Paul is saying. For I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. 
May we bear the marks of Jesus. It goes on to say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. So we need the grace of God. I want us to understand tonight, and this is this is my last plea, this is my last uh, point on markings and the mark, amen. The mark is in your bark. Remember that. Remember that. Sometimes things are doubted until they see the mark. Sometimes we don't even like, you know, know where to stand on a stage unless we see the mark that they put there for us to stand. Okay. Sometimes, okay. In the beginning of the race, what do they say? On your mark. That means get some, get on your mark and get ready to go forward. Just like in that vision that I had, we were peering, you know what I'm saying? So, um, the, a mark can be a target, hit the mark, hit the target. Okay. A line, uh, a figure, a symbol that what a mark can be. Okay. Amen. Even Thomas needed to see the marks on Jesus hands before in his feet, before he believed glory to God. I need you to understand the importance of the mark. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, I said that was my last one, but it's not. (laughs) So we go to like uh, 2 Timothy. This one is a a big one, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. But 2 Timothy 1 through 7, you know, I'll read the first one. But but mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. I love when Dr. Uwe said, you know, this is a time of consecration. You either in this thing or you not. There is no half stepping. Stepping. Who wants a part-time lover? Nobody. God definitely does not want that. Okay? We need to return back to our first love. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. And it goes on to say people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, and all of that. Read that when you have your um, time. This is why it's important for us to understand um, by receiving by receiving the Lord's mercy and truth and the fear of the Lord that it purges us from iniquity. Amen. Not our truth, but his truth. Amen. His mercy and his, the, the reverential fear of the Lord. Amen. If we have the fear of the Lord, it's certain things that we just won't do. Glory to God. This is why it's important as children of God to receive the mark of the Lord versus the mark of the beast. You know, when the, in the book of Revelation, where it talks about the, the hand and, and, and the forehead, knowing that whoever worships the beast and the image will, um, and receive its mark will drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. OK, I like wine every now and again, but I don't want that wine. Glory to God, which is found in uh, that passage of scripture is found in Revelations chapter 14. However, receiving the mark of the Lord, you receive his mercy. You receive his truth. OK, the fear, the reverential fear of the Lord, you receive in that the seal of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. And that's found in Ephesians chapter 4, 13 through 14. It says, and you also were included in Christ when you when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance unto the redemption of those who are God's possession. You are God's possession. I am God's possession to the praise of his glory. Amen. Glory to God. So if we also go to, um, the same chapter, Second Timothy, but uh, chapter uh, the same chapter, chapter three in Second Timothy, verse sixteen and seventeen. Okay, it says all Scripture is God breathed. This is why I like to read a lot of Scripture. Is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Every good work, that means ministry, that means business, taking care of your family, uh, walking in your calling, walking in your purpose, every good work. This, the word of God is not just here for ministry, it's here for everyday life. It's here to help us in every situation of our life in the name of Jesus. I need somebody to catch the mark is in your 
bark. Glory to God. What? So I want us to decree some things tonight, but what are we decreeing and declaring? What are we barking in the atmosphere? The word of God. That's what we're, that's what we're putting out there. We're saying what God has said. We're putting out there what God has even told us. We're putting out there the promises of God. We're putting some commands out there that it will take place in the name of Jesus. Yes, we can command some things because we have power and authority. Jesus has given that and he has given us dominion in this earth. You have to know who you are. Glory to God. Amen. So we're putting some commands even in our lives with words we say without doubt. Remember Mark 11 verse 23 and 24. Remember that we shall have whatever we say if we believe. Amen. So it says what, okay, what do we need to say though? What is it that, that we need to say in the atmosphere? Do you know what, what it is that you need need to say? Okay, I know that you have some things that you want to say, but do you know what you need to say? First things first, okay, we need to know that God knows what we need. Amen. We don't know nothing when it comes to God because he is omniscient. That means that he is all knowing. Okay, we have to know that he already knows what we have need of and it is his good pleasure to give it on to us. If you read Matthew 6 and 33, God reminds me of that scripture almost every single day. Brittany, seek the kingdom of God first and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Cause I'm like, God, I I know I want to see that. I want to see that. I want to see that one. He's like, remember me, I'll give you everything. I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I got you, Lord. So this is what he wants us to do to remember him. Seek him first in all his righteousness. He wants us to understand that it's the righteousness of Christ, not our own righteousness, not by our own works. Absolutely not. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Okay. And surely the righteousness of Christ, it is a sacrifice. Amen. If we go to Psalm four and five, it says, offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Trust in the Lord. That is going to be, that should be our motto every day anyway, to trust in the Lord. We don't understand a lot of things that's happening. Even, even a lot of prophets has got it wrong. Okay. But one thing is for sure that we will trust in the Lord, that we won't trust in nobody else, but some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we as a children of God, we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. Our trust is in the Lord bless his holy name. Hallelujah. So we trust God and we bark our mark. I hope, I hope that's making sense now to proclaim unity over the body of Christ. We need the glory bless his holy name over the body of Christ that produces oneness. Amen. When you are one, you begin to see some things move and shake and and, and manifest in the atmosphere in, in our lives in the name of Jesus. Okay. We are, we are, we are also barking our mark and the wholeness in ourselves individually. Tonight, we're going to do that and decreeing, proclaiming, proce- professing, commanding the manifestations of the promises of God in this season in Jesus name. So as I'm, as I'm going, we want, I want to proclaim some things with you guys. I want, as I, I wanted to put it in like a, a a Canva note to like put it up and screen share so we all can read it together. But I just did not have time. Hallelujah. Yes, we need oneness in the body of Christ. Yes, that is unity. I love when the Bible says the people are one. There is nothing impossible for them. That was when they were trying to build the Tower of Babel. But think about when we trying to build the kingdom of God. The people are one and there's nothing impossible for them. That's a big one. (laughs) Amen. So I want to, I'm going to say, and I just need you to repeat after me. Once we're done making these declarations, then I'm going to just go into a prayer and that'll be the, the, that'll be my time. Glory to God. So, um, you could take off your mics and you can help me, um, as we decree some things in the atmosphere, or you can keep your mics on however you want to do it. I will try to slow myself down because sometimes I talk a little too fast. Amen. But glory be to God. As we, as we proclaim, we are the body of Christ and we are many. 
We speak unity. Oneness and the glory. Of the Lord over us right now in Jesus name. Glory to God. We plead the fire of the Holy Ghost against all schisms and isms to be destroyed out of the body of Christ. We come into unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature. Of the fullness of Christ. As the body. We put on the full armor of God. In Jesus name. So now we decree over ourselves. We speak wholeness over ourselves individually. Our whole spirit, soul and body. will be kept blameless at the coming of Jesus Christ. In our patience, possess we our souls. Patience will have her perfect work in us. We will be mature and entire, wanting nothing in the name of Jesus. We are patient on the Lord, vigilant in the Lord. Resilient in the Lord and whole in the Lord. And now I believe that God wants me to have us to decree and declare over our finances and and because we need money. We're going to need money in this time. So we have to what what my mentor, Dr. Faith uh, Abraham and Dr. Uwe Abraham, they taught me, they taught us that we have to learn to decree some things. Our mind may be like, what, what, what is this? But once we decree a thing and we keep decreeing it, we are going to see it come to pass. Like I said, when we come into alignment, the mark is in your bark. So repeat after me, the blessing of the Lord makes me rich in Jesus name. And it adds no sorrow. I am the master of my money. And my money doesn't tell me what to do. I tell my money what to do. I bring, I bring great value in everything that I put my hands to do. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for the day I will not have to penny pinch and spend money on the thing I need and want.
Amen. My gratification is to see God plans come to pass in my life. Money comes to me easily. My business flourishes. Favor follows me. Making money is easy. Rich people are wonderful. I know your mind is like, what? Rich people are wonderful. Money follows me. When I spend money, it always comes back to me. I'm not afraid of money. I don't spend money to feel good. I spend money because I am good. I don't spend money. I circulate money. Now, as you, as you remind yourself every day of the, remind yourself and speak those things over your life, you will begin to see things begin to change in your life. That's just, that's just how it is. So I'm going to go into prayer right now in Jesus mighty name. And we're going to end up in this time. So Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord God, for your mighty word. We thank you for your rhema word. And Lord, I just pre- plead the blood of Jesus over this whole meeting, over our minds, over, over our bodies, over our souls right now, God. And I ask, Lord God, that you will bring us into unity even the more in the body of Christ. Let your glory fall. Let your glory be in us, oh God, that we will do exactly what you want us to do in oneness and wholeness and unity, Father God, and togetherness in the name of Jesus. Father God, even touch our body, soul, and spirit, Father God, and let that be one in Jesus' name. Lord God, heal us, Father God, from soul issues, things that we have, may have gone through as a child, things that we have, may have been traumatized with and growing up. Whatever the case is, God, God, help us to be one in ourselves, oh God. Help our faith to make us whole in the name of Jesus. We shall see the glory of God in our life the promises of God in our life in the name of Jesus. Father God, help us to wait on you. Father God, and again, I say wait on you in the name of Jesus. God, in our patience, we shall possess our souls in the name of Jesus. We will speak and decree a thing and see it come to pass. The mark is in our bark. We will give the command. We will give the decree, the professing, Father God, the declaration and see it come to pass, whether it be in marriage, whether it be in business, whether it be on our job. Father God, let your will be done in our life, oh God. Help us to be mindful of the people that we keep around us in the name of Jesus. Help us to cut off things, Father God, prune things and people and places that is not in your will for our lives. God, we are succeeding this year in 2021 in Jesus' name. Father God, we are putting in the work in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Father God, let your glory fall upon us, oh God. We will do great things. We were created for great things, oh God. We are your children, oh God, and we shall see it come to pass. Sin will not reign in our body, oh God. We will not do what's pleasing to the flesh, but what's pleasing to God. We will see you greatly in this year, and people will see our light, and they will glorify you in heaven, oh God. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name. We understand that the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. So we take it by force. We take it by force. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we take it. There is, we come against delay. We come against setback. There is none of that this year. Father God is coming to pass this year in Jesus name. We take the promises of God by force. We take that marriage by force. Father God, we take that business uh, success by force. We take those souls for the kingdom of God by force in the name of Jesus. We will not be ashamed. Father God, 
finding out of who we are in Christ Jesus because if we are ashamed of Christ, he will be ashamed of us, oh God. We do not grasp our own life, but God, we lose it for Christ's sake that we may get the life that you have created us to have. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of, of God in Christ Jesus. Father God, we give you all the glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. We shall see testimonies after this faithful day. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you, Lord, for yours is the kingdom, the glory. Father God, You, be- everything belongs to you. You are the creator of all things seen and unseen. Everything has come from you and everything will return to you. And we give you all the glory, Lord, and we love you so much. You are the great I am. You are the alpha and the omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. There is nobody before you, neither will there be anybody after you. God, we love you and we bless your holy name and we say thank you Lord and keep us as we go about the way in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen hallelujah glory be to God amen thank you Jesus